the normal way of learning is triple loop learning. So there's set one loop, single loop here, there's double loop, and there's triple loop. What the narcissist does, and maybe what your developmental trauma does, is it disables your double loop learning, your triple loop learning. You get stuck and focused on the results or not doing anything wrong. Yeah, can you say why we're stuck in there? <laughs> what happens is that normally growing up, you take actions and you see the results, but the narcissist or the abuser, they give you cognitive dissonance right here. See, so they don't let you have insights. They fuck up your insights. They don't let you do double loop. So they give you confusing feedback. They give you more rules and they mess up your frame. So instead of reframing to update your map, they reframe you with confusion. And how do they do that? They make you feel guilty and they make you feel doubt. Now, the other thing they do is they put you in a state of dissociation. They take away your context. They mess up this third loop. They give you time distortion. They give you a trance state. So 20 years can go by, but it feels like a day or one year over and over again because they mess with your perception of time because their sense of time is fucked up. How do they do that? And why do we let them do that? Why do we give them that power? They're oh, that's, lost. Mm -hmm. They're in dissociation. So they just yes. have to drag you into their world. So that's how they do it. Now, why you let them do it is because we're human. We merge with other people. And if you've been groomed by a uh, abuser parent or a uh, lack of parent figure, you fall into this shared dissociation very easy. So then you lose your sense of self right here and you can't make sense of anything. Yeah, I was gonna say those why question almost is a, is a triggering thing for me because when I get asked the, why would you do that? Why'd you do that? Why is this? Why is that? And it, and it completely distracts off the real message you're talking about, please don't do this. It, it pushes my legs or, or, you know, whatever. And then we get down to a, it becomes like a justify yourself, justify your actions. Just, it, it becomes some other topic, you know. That's partially guilt too. But I do get triggered when why is attached to extreme emotion and judgment. And when there's an offloading of the other person's emotion onto me that is outsized to the question. If it were a simple question, it'd be one thing. Like, oh, why is that? Then then we could discuss it. But it's, why is this? You know, why are you like that? Why? What were you thinking? Like th those things um, become a... That's the exaggerated emotion, which creates yeah. the cognitive dissonance because the words don't match the emotional intensity. Yeah. That's an invisible cognitive dissonance. I feel like there's two things that I thought of there. I thought the same way as Kurt was, which was like, you know, something that is um, like easily human, human corrected, like um, leaving a, a door ajar or, you know, something that I would typically do, like leave, leave the door wide open. <laughs> it, it's like, why would you do that? It would so, or like over the top or anyone else would be like, ah, okay, shut the door. And like, talk about it, sure, but it, it didn't need to be like a, like a why, because clearly I, there's no answer for it. There's no answer other than, because I suck, <laughs> you know, like in the moment. I actually hate you, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like, you don't have a comeback because there's really no reason. It's like, why didn't you get the laundry done? Like the only thing you, can you don't need to have a comeback. Why do you need a comeback? No, I'm just yeah. saying that that made me think of that. The other thing is I know all of us on the other side have been like, especially when, when you're dealing with someone who's hurt you, when you get to the point where like, how could you have done that? How did, why did you do that? Why did you do that one thing? Um, they never have an answer. I and mean, you're always asking why. You're always asking like, why would they do this to me if they love me, right? But there's two whys going on. So there's a why of identity, of what the fuck's going on. And then there's guilt, the narcissist saying, why are you ruining the whole world? So you have this guilt, doubt, and shame spiral, which fucks up your learning. So then you end up doing the same thing for 20 years because you're not updating your map and you're not updating your uh, principles. So this would be the more ideal model of updating your map. That's the double loop learning. And that's partially what we're going to try to do today is trying to talk out and add perspectives. And then so you can have a reality check, update your framing, update your map of the world. So then you don't get as much cognitive dissonance.
And then if we can cover some of the narcissist framework, we can make sense of what's going on in the narcissist. We can do triple loop learning. We're expanding our container. We're expanding our sense of self to include their fucked up nonsense of self. So we then we can make sense of that. So then when they try to knock us off balance, we'll be more centered. We'll be able to con control our attention. We'll have a stronger sense of self. Oh. So this is the goal of proper learning. If you want to grow up, you have single, double, and triple loop learning. So then you figure things out instead of just looking for a new guru.